Say it. Say it. To watch a young wrestler. It's a level of say everything it. that you do. Say it. It's a level of worship. And God is all about worship. Yeah. So I have three points and then I'll be I'll be I'll be right. First is, amen. The question is, why did Satan fall? Why did he fall? Amen. He fell because he wanted not to be high. I mean, not to be holy, but to be high. He wanted to be high, not holy. He wanted to be worshipped. And we were, we're all born with, with, that, with an endemic nature. Write this scripture down. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 14, uh, verses 12 to 15. Please hear me. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Amen. Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which this weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will, I will. ascend the rest of God into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount, to the peak of a mountain, of the congregation, that's us. In the size of the north, the direction is up. I will ascend above, see that in the direction, yeah. amen. The height of the clouds, clouds above. Yeah. I will be, I will be like the most what? High, you can say holy. Yeah. And God said, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the size of the pit. And all of us have the same nature. Amen. We all have a different nature. We desire to be lifted up. We, we, we have a desire to be exalted. Uh, if you don't believe me, amen. Who's the first person you look at in a group picture? <laughs> and if you look bad, then the whole picture is bad. Right? Yeah. Amen. When you got a good picture, I don't care if it's two, amen, or two hundred. If you look bad, first thing you do, when you look at the picture, you look for you. Yeah. And if you look bad, eye closed, amen, amen. amen. smile jacked up. Yeah. When you see that, then the whole picture is bad. Yeah. Because all of us have an identity nature. Right. I hear you. And Satan always wants to talk about himself. Yeah. And Jesus always wants to talk about the Father. Mm -hmm. Now hear me. Uh, every time he tried to give Jesus a compliment, he said he was doing what his father told him to do. Right, right. That he came to glorify his father. Mm -hmm. The more you become like Christ, the more you turn your conversation about Christ mm -hmm. and other folk. Uh, you want to bring out the best in other folk. Not you. Right. It's not about you. Say it. Amen. Amen. Uh, all Satan wants to do, and will ever want to do, is steal worship from God. Yes. That's all he wants to do. Amen. He has to turn to Jesus and try to get Jesus to worship to worship him. Write this scripture down, Matthew 4, Amen, verse 8 and 9 says, Again, the devil taketh up him up. See that? To exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Hear me. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee, hear me, if thou wilt fall down yeah. and worship me. Yeah. Fall down and worship me. Now hear me. Because beloved, worship is always expressed. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I need to pull over there, man. Worship is always expressed. A worship is not expressed. Uh, do you have a God that, that, that's not possessed? You need to, you need to, uh, beloved, express your worship. Amen. Worship is love and life that's always expressed. It should be, be able to be seen, to be noticed. Amen. Too many folks come to church and not express their worship. Amen. Amen. You just sit there. Now, now let, let me even horn down one more. Most of us men. Yeah. Amen. Uh, beloved, uh, we come to church and don't say nothing. Right, right. Just sit there. 
Then we say that on a, uh, I'm just not expressive, uh, you know, I'm not just an expressive person. Yeah. But you were Monday night and suffered to be <laughs> You're expressive doing any, any game. You're expressive then. So let me say something to you, uh, period. Men, your kids, your companions, your wife, they're watching you. Right, right. And they need to see that a real man expresses his love. Yeah. yeah. Worship should be something that's observed. Mm. A person should be able to, to watch you and see that you are a worshiper. Amen. Putting a uniform on is not enough. Amen. Putting a robe on is not enough. Amen. There should be a sweet smelling fragrance about you. You need to be invited, not argumentative. We need to express the love of God. That should be, you should be different than most people. There should be a difference about you. Where you have an impact. An impact. And the problem with that is that, you know, uh, Satan, amen, he failed because he wanted to be worshipped. You're not. Right, right, right. Uh, the only attention you want uh, the folks to notice first is that you, your uniform. After that, it should be about how you react. How you react. Now let me ask the, the question. My second point is, uh, who created the instruments? God. God did. God did. But here we did. Isaiah fourteen eleven says, "Thy pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. Vials is an instrument. Yeah. Thy vials." Amen. The worm is spread on the, under thee, and the worms cover thee. The instruments were brought down uh, because of how he used them. Okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me make it a little plain. You know what? If the grass is not cut, or the light bulb is out, All right. we have a church in you. <laughs> but if a soul is lost, it's business as you yeah. Church work, anybody can do. Mm -hmm. All right. The work of the church, only believers can do. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me say that one more time. Church work, yeah. anybody can do. Yeah. yeah. The work of the church, only believers can do. Say and do in the church carries that person. Amen. But no, sometimes the rest of their lives. Some of the most gratifying things have been said to some folks in church and some of the most hurtful things have been said to folks in church. We say things, beloved, and, and we want to uh, uh, blame it on emotion. Enough of that. Enough of that. As a believer, my job is to hold you accountable as a believer. Your, as, you as a believer is to hold me accountable as a believer. There's a way to do it though. You see, we can't be out in out front of the church arguing each other about how we didn't exemplify Matthew chapter 4 and 4 and somebody ride by and see you got in the head like, oh, I said, this ain't what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. That's not how you do it. We can't go out and fight one another. Hear me. What draws people to Christ is how we love one another. The key here is, beloved, we're stressing unity. God created it. Amen. And he did it in the Garden of Eden. Now hear me. In the Garden of Eden, there were only four persons in the Garden of Eden. Adam, Eve, God, and Satan. Now hear me. In Ezekiel 28, uh, God talks about uh, 
the king of Tyrus, amen, sealings up the sum and wisdom and the merchandise. But he was talking about the things that he was doing that were exemplifying, exemplifying how Satan was living, how Lucifer was living. All right. Oh, I need you to get this. I'm taking somewhere here. What God was saying is that Tyrus was behaving based on the Satan's influence. A lot of us are behaving based on Satan's influence. Too many of us take Satan lightly. We think he's a, just a little guy on our shoulder with a red suit on, looking, with a fish for a waist, looking at somebody bent over. But if you're not aware of him, you're going to be influenced by him. Now, a believer can be possessed by him, but a believer can be influenced by him. What gets us in trouble is we take him too lightly. Ah, oh, the devil may be doing it. Ha, ha, ha. No. He's a real enemy. And his, what he wants is to get you to think he doesn't exist. But Jesus complimented Peter and in the same conversation addressed Satan. Because of how Peter thought. Oh, you ain't hearing me. When Peter thought wrongly, he said, you're thinking of the things of the world here and not of, of you your thoughts should be manifested constantly on him. He renews your mind, not brainwashes you. Now hear me. He says in his word in Ezekiel 28, he says, You've been merchandising. Uh, uh, in the way that's unpleasant to me. Okay, let, let me make a plan where you can grab it. Uh, it's like buying a, 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 let's say if you go into a, a, a dress shop and you buy a suit. And the man comes out and he gives you the money for the suit and the suit is $300. And you take the 200, 200 of it, put it in the cash register, you take another 100, put it in your pocket. You just rob the owner of the store for hundred dollars. What Satan did was he took a hundred of the three hundred dollars of worship that people were given and put it in his pocket, robbing God of his worship. And for that, God put him out. Because all of worship belongs to him. All of worship belongs to him. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, Satan was created with instruments. Okay, let me break this down. Uh, there are three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. Amen. And there are three pillars, amen, in which the church is built. The church is built on the word, prayer, and worship. Oh, now hear me, hear me. <clears throat> beloved, Every Sunday, every Sunday, we come to pray, worship, and hear the word. Yeah. In your private, quiet time, you need to pray, worship, and read his word. Now, and in, in when you come, hear me, Michael and Gabriel and Lucifer. Michael was always answering prayer. He was always bringing an answer from God and pray. He let Daniel know his prayer was being answered. Gabriel was always, amen, bringing the word. He brought the word to Mary, to Zacharias. Amen. He brings God's word. Lucifer used to rule worship. He ruled worship. Amen, hear me. And all of us have this instrument. And the instrument, beloved, is percussion, wind, and string. All instruments are one of the three. All instruments are one of the three. Now hear me. You have them yourself. Percussion. You can clap. Yeah. Oh, help me somebody. Right. You can stomp your feet. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Amen. Stringed vocal cords. That's what you have. Yeah. Stringed vocal cords. When you open your mouth and speak and sing. And the wind, amen, is your breath passing through them. Yeah. So you have wing, percussion. Oh, hear me somebody. Amen. And vocal cords are instruments. Now hear me. Satan was created with instruments, but he failed. And God then created you. And what you do when you come into the church as believers and what you do at home 
is how you're handling your instrument. Somebody's watching how you handle your instrument. You're influencing somebody. Somebody's sitting here now in dress clothes want to know what they need to do to get a uniform. Because they're watching you. Or, God forbid, they're watching you and don't want a uniform. Beloved, hear me. God created you with instruments. And more happens with instruments than you think. Okay, let me, let me go here with you. In 1 Chronicles 13 and 8, the Bible says, and David and all Israel played before God with all their might and with singing and with harps and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. You see that? Winged it. Now hear me. Hear me. Beloved, it was vital. It was vital. Uh, uh, the essence is in, in, in 2 Chronicles 5 and, and, and 3, 5, 13 and 14, it says, and it came to pass as the trumpeters and the singers as were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and in thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy and good forever, that the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. You hear me? So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. That's what instruments do. That's what you, you are an instrument of God. Yeah. Love it, hear me. Hear me. Let it be. Play your instrument. Worship God with all your hair. Whatever you do, do it with all of your might. Yeah. Amen. Come in here, beloved, and make being an usher attractive. Make being a nurse attractive. Make being a choir member attractive. Yeah. Whatever it is you do for God, make it attractive by doing it all you can and the best you can. Because, beloved, somebody is watching you. Yeah. Worship and praise him with your instruments, and your instrument is you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So, amen. Satan failed for an acceptable, unacceptable worship. Amen. And God made the instruments. Yeah. But also, what else did God do? Hear me. The amazing thing about Genesis chapter, that's the amazing thing about Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Uh, it says in the beginning, God. We know that in 1 and 1. But then he says, uh, it says <clears throat> in chapter 2, verse 2, it says that uh, there was void, darkness, and chaos, and emptiness. Uh, there was a situation. Yes, sir. As a believer, you're going to always be in a situation. And what separates you from non-believers is how you handle your situation. All of us are in the same situations, but we're different people in the situation. We're twice born people in one born world in a situation. Being a believer doesn't, doesn't immune you from being in unpleasant situations. But those that are, are non-believers are watching how believers act in, un, in un, caring and unfavorable situations. Oh, hear me. Uh, hear me. God said, uh, uh, he saw the darkness, he said, let there be light. Okay, now, this is what, this is what he's saying. He said, let me bring some, some form. Amen. Some land, seas, amen. The light of day and the light at night, stars in the sky, plants to feel the emptiness, amen. Create some animals and birds that sing and bringing fullness to, to, your, to the emptiness. Yeah. Oh, get this. Don't miss this. And he, when he did that, I'm sure Lucifer said to him, amen. Uh, he may have said, You got all this, but who's going to give you praise? Yeah. I'm going to let that settle in there. You did all of this, but who's going to give you praise? Yeah. Who's going to give you honor? Who's going to give you glory? Who's going to be your worship leader now? 
Beloved, hear me. Then God revealed, reached down to earth, got some dirt, blew in it, yeah. and said, this is my new worship leader. Yeah, yeah. He made you. Yeah. He made you. Amen. Satan ran to the new worship leaders and said, you can be like God. Oh, help me somebody. And Adam and Eve bought it. Bought it. They believed it. Amen. And emptiness, darkness, chaos came right back in the world. Amen. And then God said, let there be light and sent his son in the world. Help me somebody. The light of the world. Beloved, hear me. Ushers, God created you in his image. Mm, yes, Lord. With instruments to worship and praise in all that you do and all that you are. And I promise you, when you do to the glory of God, the Lord will fill the house. Yeah. Amen. Hear me. Not just the house, but this house. Yeah. As he fills this house, you better hear me. Amen. And that house is you. Well, beloved, you don't realize how powerful uh, your, your dedicated worship is to God. But to us. It, it, it shows, it gathers to us. Beloved, you are God's worshiping instruments. God and all of us here are seeing and watching what you do. Yeah. Okay, now, let, let me pull over here a second because I'm about to close. The most important element that we need to have as, as, as servers and worshipers of God is kindness. Yeah, amen. Kindness. Uh, too often, beloved, we are unkind. We are unkind. We we can always be kind. All you sometimes, sometimes. Hear my heart on this. We think that we have to be theologically on point to be able to quote all scriptures and to to be to draw folks to Christ. No, no, no. You draw you can be like Christ. You don't have to memorize everything that Christ says. Christ like indwells you. This is why I talk about mentors. Now hear me. Whether you want to be or not, you are somebody's mentor. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's always watching you. Now, you determine if you're going to be a mentee. But you don't have a choice in being a mentor. Somebody's always watching you. And within that, Beloved, <clears throat> all you need to do is to understand and to say, beloved, it's, it's your instrument. He be, God became one of us to save all of us. Yeah. Amen. Hear me, Compton Hill. Be an instrument. You don't have to know the difference between an apostle or an epistle or quote the Old or New Testament. Remember that Jesus saves. Yeah. That's a, answer for, he's the answer for any agony, balm for any bruise, the cure for any crisis, Deliver from any distress. He's the eraser for all your errors. You're never too low to be lifted, too dirty to be cleansed, too broken to be fixed, too damaged to be redeemed, too lost to be found, too empty to be filled, too hurt to be healed, too bruised to be renewed, too ratchet to be reclaimed, too oppressed to be empowered, too crippled to be cured, too cracked up to be repaired, too defective to be restored, too dead to be, re to be revived, too sinful to be saved, too hurt to be healed, too fractured to be mended, no matter if you're cracked out, cracked out, dropped out, put out, drunk out, smoked out, stepped out, or just left out. And maybe your God will stand for you, stand with you. Amen. May, hear me, somebody. It may be your condition, but it does not be your conclusion. The Bible says, Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. He's sinless in his steps, silent in his sufferings, Savior in our souls, sovereign in our struggles. Master, he's a beloved. We have a master to serve, a message to share, and a moment to seize. Let me close here. We have a message. To, to save, to share. 
and a moment to seize. This is our moment, beloved. Yeah. Every moment we, beloved, when he says move, we move. Yeah. Yeah. I got nothing to do with ludicrous. When he says move, yeah. we move. Have the courage to obey. The Bible says, seek me while I may be found. And somebody is seeking the Lord, and you are the answer to that prayer. Somebody needs you to be the instrument. Oh, help me somebody. So that hurt can be healed. Confusion can be cleared. The heart can be fixed. Life can be changed. Family can be put back together. Don't underestimate how important you are, how valuable you are. Why does God hear me? I noticed that during, during, during Biden's, amen, everywhere he goes, he's always got a bunch of Secret Service people all the time. And that's because he's, he's valuable to the nation. Now hear me. Hear me. Beloved, you're valuable to God. Oh, hear me. I, I, let me stress this here. You're valuable to God. Amen. You are important to God. Realize how valuable you are. Beloved, hear me. He has his angels over you all night, all day. Angels are watching over you because you are valuable to God's kingdom. Hear me. Beloved, um, it's like a little boy that was um, six years old. He came in. His mom and dad was, was, was sleeping in bed at 5 30 in the morning. And he said, Mom, Daddy, get up, get up, get up. And they said, Boy, well, put some clothes on and go downstairs and play. And he, he, went, he went downstairs and they were sleeping at about 9 30 in the morning. He came back in and said, Mom, Daddy. So yeah, I went outside and, and everybody on that block, doorbell work. <laughs> and I know that now. Now hear me. Hear me. Beloved, um, um, he just did what was on his heart. Now, don't miss this. So he came home and he got his little dog. Amen. He put his dog in the swimming pool. Amen. And the dog was soaking wet. And the, the parents were just sitting there to watch the TV, and the dog ran in the house and shook. And everybody that was dry got wet. Now, what am I saying? Hear me. Everybody that was in the house dry got wet because he was wet. Everybody in here. You come to spend time with God, you're wet. You need to leave and shake off. Oh, help me somebody. Make everybody else around you wet. Uh, you need to make a difference where you are, beloved. You make everybody around you wet. Stop being ashamed to shake off what God has done to you. God has soaked you in his word, his will, and his way. You're soaking wet. Shake it off. Shake it on somebody that's dry. Oh, help me somebody. Shake it on somebody that's dry, beloved. Amen. The essence of the peak in, in the worship that Satan was talking about was he wanted to be high and lifted up. He wanted to be on a mount. Amen. And there are two mountains, beloved, that mean everything to me. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Mount Calvary, amen, in the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, y'all better hear me. On Mount Calvary, he dealt with ignominy and shame. On Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus revealed himself in his glory. Amen. On Mount Calvary, he was stained with blood. Yeah. On amen, Mount Transfiguration, his clothes were shining white. Amen. On Mount Calvary, there were two criminals. Yeah. Amen. On the Mount Transfiguration, there were two heroes, Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Oh, y'all want to get with me here? Amen. On Mount Calvary, the darkness covered the land. Yeah. Amen. But on Mount Transfiguration, there was a Shekinah glory. Yeah. Oh, help me somebody. Yeah. On Mount Calvary, the, he hit, he hides, Peter hides and denies. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. But on Mount, on Mount Transfiguration, Peter says, Lord, build tabernacles for all help me somebody. Amen. Amen. On Mount Calvary, a centurion speaks. Amen. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus says, Father, Amen. This is all help me somebody. Amen. The Father says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Beloved, hear me. On the Mount Calvary, a centurion speaks. Amen. But beloved, on Mount Transfiguration. The voice of God says, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Because in order to say something, you need to see something. And when you see, you just stand on what you see. Folks are seeing you now. You got your white on when you leave, folks are going to beloved, you need to have the white on when you take the white off. What you do as a worshiper, all that you do is as a worshiper. 
You are an instrument. Let God use you. Be kind. Make a difference. Beloved, let the pride go. Be humble. Because it's a privilege to serve. It's a privilege to serve. It's a priority to serve. Amen. Because one Friday, amen, on a hill called Calvary, he died. He died, beloved. And he died and stayed dead. All night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, early Sunday morning. He got up. Now, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. I don't want to try to do a, a, a jump up and down. I don't. I need you to hear my heart this morning. Uh, beloved, the world is watching us. The culture is watching us. The city is watching us. Uh, they talked about the other day, uh, then I'll close, how in a city that they sort of posted Ten Commandments. And, and some folks in the city were celebrating the song, were saying, oh, you, you, you know, you're forcing uh, your religion on me. Now hear me. The Bible says, every knee will bow. Yeah. Every tongue will confess. Yeah. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. To some folks, the Bible, hear me, is just a book. Yeah. But beloved, to you, it's our way of life. Yeah. You just keep serving. You just keep giving. Yeah. You just keep Christ righteous living. Yeah. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Yeah. Amen. Stuff is going to happen. Yeah. But trust God. There's going to be confusion, hear me, in the home. Oh, I need to go here. Remember what I said about the eagle last week? That with, with the enemies of the eagle always waste till the eagle is away and attacks the babies. The eagle enemies waste till the eagle is away to attack the babies. I don't just mean infants. We have loved ones that, that, that we're raising, or that, that we raise, that don't know God like we do. And we need to exemplify the glory of God in our situations. Yeah. All situations. They need to see us lead from our knees. Lead from our knees. Don't try to fight every battle. Yeah. Remember when the three Hebrew boys went into the furnace? Okay. And one said, didn't we send three in there? And he said, no, yeah, send three, but I see four. And one looks like the son of God. You know that was a non-believer that said that. Oh, y'all, I don't think y'all get it. That was a non that was a non-believer that said that. Yeah. Now hear me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't their names. But they didn't fight that. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. They didn't argue, oh, they ain't my name, they ain't my name. They didn't fight that. Stop trying to fight every battle. Same. Same. But when they said you need to bow down to worship this God, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And a non-believer saw God. Mm -hmm. Hear me. And then praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Don't you want your family to praise your God? Watch how you handle it. Oh, oh. But they still had to get in the furnace. Daniel went to the lion's den. Beloved, hear me. Daniel wasn't his name. He didn't argue that. When they tried to get him to eat something that would defile himself, he said no. Oh, hear me. He didn't wait until he got in the back of the car to decide to get hold of it. When you get up in the morning, you decide that I will not defile myself. But something will happen. Yeah. Hear me. Daniel went into the lion's den. 
then discover that lions are, are allergic to, amen, faithful meat. What I'm saying here is this, beloved. I don't want us to be discouraged in what we're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Serving with all your might. I can promise you the authority of the word of God. Amen. He'll save you. He'll make a difference. Amen. It may not always be immediate, but it's imminent. You keep doing what you're doing. There's nothing more valuable, more powerful than a praying belief. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. He will change your situation. Or help me somebody. He'll change your home. He'll change family members. Just keep praying. Just keep hearing. He may not change them immediately, but he will, first of all, he will change you. He will change you. Trust him today. Trust you today. Hear me. God is real. And you're serving him as an instrument. Beloved, people are only going to see the realness of God by seeing the realness of your worship. You determine, amen, how real God will be viewed by those around you, by the way you use your instrument. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Trust him. Trust him. Is that what? Trust him. Trust him. Until Is that what? Serving, um, amen. Instead of 25 years, Pam now has 24 carats. Amen. And so, amen. But like mother, like daughter, she's on her way, one carat at a time. Amen. But, uh, but the essence is he's a generational God. Um, I look out and see you all in uniform, and I, I can look out and see your mothers. Amen. Some of you are looking. Uncanny like your mamas. Amen. Uh, but he's a generational God. And the essence is that you're the instrument that God uses. You keep your instrument polished. Amen. Use it. Use your instrument to God's glory. Be kind. Stay faithful, focused, and fervent in serving God. Amen. You may not get an immediate thank you from folks that you're serving with, but God sees all you're doing. Sees all you do. Amen. You go to bed at night. You go to bed at night. Before you call tonight. You can say to yourself, Lord, I did the best I could today. 
I may not have been the best, but I did my best. Amen. And if you wake up that next morning, God's going to give you another chance. Amen. I thank God for another chance. Amen. He keep giving me another chance. Giving all of us another chance. We thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. How many guests today? Good to see you, Mom. Amen. Greet us. Thank you. Praise God. Great to see you, Mom. Amen. Every time I see you, I think about Ruth Franklin. Good to see you, sweetheart. Amen. Wonderful. You kept your word. You keep your word. Always have. Wonderful to see you. Love you so much. Amen. Love you so much. Center, good to see you, sweetheart. Amen. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Now your sister looking all proud now. You know, she got a backup. Amen. You know how, amen, when you got some backup now. Amen. Wonderful to see you. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh oh. Whoa, look out. See, bring the hood out now. Amen. It's good to see you all. Amen. Let me say something. Uh, 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 I just think it needs to be said, and that's uh, but be careful out here because uh, uh, these viruses are still real. And uh, it's affecting our loved ones. Uh, we need to be circumspect on what we're doing. Uh, uh, be wise. Amen. And be cautious. Be caring, amen. Be considerate and listen. Listen, you know, you don't know everything. Listen to those that know. Amen. Amen. Wonderful to see all of you. Amen. Again, thank you for what you've done today. Thank you for worshiping with us, Mama. Amen. And let us, our hearts and minds are clear. I mean, don't forget your sandwiches are next door. Amen. So you take them as you go. Amen. 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 Don't forget the concert. It's at 5.30. 5.15. Are they changing? 5.15 at what? What's the name of the park? Ivory Prairie Park. 800 Bell Avenue. Yeah. But uh, they have, and, and a lot of Compton Hill will, will be there. Amen. Galilee and several other churches. Amen. Okay. All those instruments are using their instruments of their voices. Amen. And so let's support them. Amen. As, as they go in. Amen. And we sing a joyful noise unto the Lord. They're using their instruments. Amen. Amen. Just as you all are using yours. Yeah. Use your instruments. Amen. If our hearts and minds are clear, let us stand. Receive the benediction. Let the church down, pray to him. Look in, trust him. Look out and worship him. Live life expecting him. Now I want to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you false before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and to majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. I love you, come to him. Amen. Serve your king, serve your king.
ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸੋਡੇ